Kendrick. What up? Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Welcome to The Let Out, a very um, special Black History Month edi edition. And as you can see, we are not in Atlanta. We're actually in Inglewood, California, uh, bringing it to where a lot of black people, not even just Inglewood, but just Hollywood period, the, the LA area period is where a lot of black people who have engaged in storytelling have come to take a lot of power back. And so that's what the whole purpose of this campaign is when I was developing just copy around why I want to do this, I was thinking about the birth of the nation and the first version of birth of a nation. You might've seen the one with, what's that guy's name? Nate Parker. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about the one that came out in like 1914, 1914, 1915. And this is one of the first films that was broadcasted nationwide it was shown in other countries it was shown in the white house woodrow wilson was a fan and it depicted black people in the most horrible light and i just like now that i think about it, like why do we have to be in it like if it's the first feature film like why now how we get in it we was minding our business um as we usually do but no i just thought about how even before that minstrel shows blackface black actors having to wear blackface in order to be in order to participate in white people's stories and the action of taking the pen back, the action of putting ourselves in front of the camera, um, and, and whatever avenues we had to do that has been so revolutionary because the imagery produced in film and media is essentially what's been upholding narratives ar around black people. So um, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that you're here. I'm really excited about today's conversation. I don't know if you guys know this. You might recognize him from How to Get Away with Murder um, from Insecure, for sure. But when I came across his social profiles in 2020, I saw him in the streets. Were you in Houston or were you in LA when you were doing protests? I was in both. Mm. And it was pandemic, so I drove to Texas. <laughs> I was like, I'm not getting on a plane. Okay. But yeah, I was in both. And, and yeah, we led, we co-led and produced, um, uh, different content to make sure we're keeping people informed and uh, the protests have, of course supported amplified and you know co-organized protests here and in Houston mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. okay well fantastic um, I'm so excited to have you here with us this week I know we're pre-shooting a lot of content but it just made the most sense to have you here for the conversation especially since the news about Tyree Nichols is so fresh um, we don't have the most up-to-date information at the point of this conversation, but I did just kind of want to get your input. A lot of people are absolutely against watching that film at all. Not film, I'm sorry, that video at all whatsoever. And we were sort of talking a little bit early about how useful it is to see these visuals. And I just kind of want to know your thoughts about the fatigue of it all, um, what that means for communities, what it means for that family, just any thoughts yeah I mean I mean I I, I don't want to see it I haven't watched it um, I, I don't need the inspiration to enrage me I've been enraged I'm exhausted and I know a lot of people can relate to the fatigue um, it still is what it is the headlines need to be um, amplified the truth needs to be amplified, but also it's just like, you know, for me in particular, I haven't said a whole lot about it. I'm posting a, a bit, but um, haven't said a whole lot about it because it's like, what else am I gonna say? I know in, me in particular, I sound like a broken record. I'm like, abolition, 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 abolition. I'm blah, 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 blah. You go, just, every time somebody die, every time somebody, it's the system, it's not just one, it's the system. They're like, but they black. We didn't have black slave catchers. It's been since the beginning. We got the same, like abolition is abolition. We still got slave catchers. We got any form of slavery. Then we know what we need to do. You know, we can call it invest, divest. We can call it, you know, a, a, a bunch of different things, but the, the rage has to be utilized productively um, toward the solutions that get us free, that are centered on liberation, not, not just mitigating damage, 
not trying to placate politics, not compromising and reaching across the aisle and all this mess. It's got to be for the liberation of our people, and you can't support and continue to resource a violent system that produces the same results it has since slavery mm -hmm. <laughs> and hope for different. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to work. Um, there's a lot of ways to get there. I don't think any of them have been um, invested in properly or taken seriously by those in power because those in power benefit from the way that it's been established. And for us, you know, who are living our lives outside of uh, government offices and positions, um, we have our duty to support those community leaders who've been fighting for these things and screaming and yelling. As soon as 2020 ended, that support went away for a lot of the organizations and they're having to operate on the budgets that were raised in 2020 still today. So, you know, who are we supporting? What, what solutions? It's, we can't just allow ourselves to be distracted by going back to survival mode and in the status quo. Um, what are we going to invest in? What are we going to actually do? It's, it, it, and it gets exhausting to, to keep yeah. saying the same thing over and over again and, and um, not see the results that, that, that we need. Yeah, and um, I, I feel that almost every time I get out to do a parking lot, I have been great. I have been blessed enough to develop sort of this team to help me ideate when it comes to the parking lot so I can do and do other things and be other places. But I'm always asking the question is, what new can I say about this? Like, what is the new implication that's being shown here? What is this particular narrative? Because I've been saying the same thing over and over again and it makes me feel, as a content creator and also as someone who has made this the Kickstarter of career, like I can't be in this place anymore because what else am I able to do besides repeat the information to people? Let them know this is the new headline and it gets, it gets discouraging. It's not gonna make me stop. And I think that's, you know, that's the difference, I think. People who know that they can't stop and so they don't, but it doesn't change the amount of fatigue that happens. And it's concerning because I haven't said too much about it either. I made a post just generally educating people on Tyree um, about what looking at that types of video can do to black people when they watch it. Like even when in the episode I mentioned the hate that you, the hate you give the movie, I thought it was a real tearjerker. I thought the story was palatable enough for all kinds of audiences to pull from it. And we have to appreciate that. I've had a lot of conversations with my team about types of content film and media content that are available to people and we can't necessarily we can't necessarily put it in these hierarchies of whether it's good or not because there's always an audience that needs to see it in this particular way so I think the hate you give function is one of those pieces that spoke across the aisle um, and there was that one scene where the youngest brother pulled the gun out of his dad's pocket and was like leave my daddy alone broke down in tears in the theater like sobbing because i have little brothers and i'm that's immediately what i'm thinking and you know studies are beginning to or scholars are beginning to do case studies about how black people feel when watching this type of content and we have to as a form of self-care like cut that off but it does concern me in, in terms of like you said, you don't need the inspiration. You don't need to be re-enraged, re but it's more so about a reinvigoration. Yeah. I still think, however, reading about the story does just that. Like me and my team sat down last night and as we were reading over the details, just getting more and upset, more and upset, we don't have to see, we don't have to see what happened. Um, and it just breaks my heart to even imagine that that's out there and his mother has to see those things. And my hope is that the community can still be just as engaged hearing these details and rally around that mother and show up and support that mother just as much as we did in 2020. Um, and the last thing that I'll say about that is timing is everything because as you said, a lot of those organizations didn't continue to get support after 2020, but even the messaging that's being put out, even the different campaigns, companies, or myself as a social media influencer, it's for show. It's to show like, okay, I'm gonna recognize that this is a bad thing because the world did. But I also know that the things that keep my pockets lined 
also contribute to that, so I'm not going to do too much. I'm not going to do too much and I'm not going to do it for too long because I want to get back in bed with the same people that are making me money. So um, I th think it's a really interesting conversation and meshes very well with today's topic just about how we see that perpetuated on film. We've been talking a lot on black Twitter or in comments about trauma porn. And I wanted to ask you, separate of this idea, but just off the top of your head, what are your favorite five black movies? Favorite five yeah, black top movies? Five, if you can oh do that. Lord, help me. Um, <laughs> favorite five. <clears throat> I let's see. <laughs> yeah, we can and skip then, that one. I don't know. I'm like, I'm like five, I'm like five, five black, five black favorite, five and the favorite that are black that are movies. Okay, that are mine. And the thing is, I don't want the thing that I said before that to cloud your judgment because I'm not going to judge you for what your favorite five are. I just want to know if they include. Any I'm just type of terrible content. at favorite questions. Okay. So, because um, then I got to think about them. Um, name some black movies like okay. Love Jones, Love, Love Jones, Basketball, Love and Basketball, Poetic Justice. Poetic, okay. Uh, uh, set it off. What else? Friday, one through seven. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else? I don't. I, you know, I don't. I really Higher Learning is back there. We have The Wiz. Learning. I'm a huge history buff, so there's I also... I love The Wiz. Okay, okay. I love The Wiz. Very that good. might be one of my one of my favorites. It's definitely one of my favorite soundtrack. Um, okay, okay. Um, That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you sound like these church ladies. That, All right, baby, let them use you. No, that's fine. It, it's okay. I'm just, I guess I'm just getting at, like, what movies make you feel good, yeah. you know, that are empowering yeah. and for what reasons? And that could be something like a Selma. It could be something like a Great Debaters. It could be something like a 12 Years a Slave. Like, for instance, 12 Years a Slave was a really interesting thing for me as a history buff because it talked about specifically... Um, it's a, it's a specific word for it, but just how they kidnap free people in the North and push them into slavery. But I take a quote from it, and it's, and it's still with me for the rest of my life. If you let yourself be overcome by sorrow, you will drown in it. And it's just like a, a life thing that I keep. And it is one of those things that's like, damn, I'm going to have to sit through this, and I'm going to have to watch this person get beat, this woman get separated from her kids. And, like, and I know these things. And I like to see reenactments, but I also don't feel like that is the only way we should feel like empowered or excited about our past, like seeing things like that are just emotionally triggering, I think. And so the question is really just to look at the vast array of media we have for a month like this month, different things that can be shown on TV because I don't think people consider like Love Jones or um, Love and Basketball something to put on the marathon for Black History Month. But like, these are all really big moments for us, like culturally, that do mean something. Like we can pinpoint what we were doing this one time we watched Love and Basketball because it, it feels so good. Yeah. You know. So. It's also hard to like have, you know, even thinking back on them, there's a, a lot, there are black movies that I enjoy and black shows more. I go back and watch every black sitcom. Um, but a lot of it is kind of what you said. It's really hard to, it's almost like when you see one of these videos online that um, talk about some traumatic thing that just happened and you want to press the like button so that they know you support, but then you right. feel guilty like, do I like it? Yeah. I don't actually like this video, you know? Yeah. So it's like a lot of the movies that we have, it's like, I'm not going to call 12 years or so. Even 12, I'm not going to call that one of my favorite movies. And I don't think you know what I'm saying? Should. But I could say it's, I could think it's excellent for mm -hmm. whatever reason and have, but it's like hard to say, oh, that's one of my favorites. Cause mm -hmm. it's, I'm like, I don't want to sit through that again, mm -hmm. to be completely honest, mm -hmm. you know? And I rarely watch movies more than once, but there's certain there's things so I never many watch of again. them. It's like, when they see us, we'll never see it again. Right. Cinematic masterpiece. Amazing. I and think the story needed to be told. Yeah. We'll never see it again. Performances are great. Ava DuVernay did her thing. But I ain't trying to be traumatized all the time. I can't. 
I can't. Yeah. And I like dark shit, to be completely. I like dark stories. I like dark humor. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't like home. seeing, especially, and it's even on another level with me a lot of the time because a lot of the time my homies are in the movie. Mm. And I'm watching them, even though I know it's acting. I always thought, you know, my, mm. my family, whenever I die on screen or get hurt on screen, I get cursed out. Why you ain't say bye bye? You this was gonna happen. Nah, 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 nah. I'm like, well, it's acting. <laughs> I've always been like, well, that's what's called. It's I'm still here. I'm, I'm on the phone job. with you right now. I promise I'm not dead. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started watching my homies do projects where they're getting tortured and stuff, especially in these these specific scenarios around slavery and police brutality and stuff. I can't watch it. Mm -hmm. I really can't. I can't, like, I will, I'll walk out. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, all right. You're like, seriously, you that sensitive about it? Kendrick, it's I mean, acting. We are. I we am. Are. And I think there's something to be said, like, we're not necessarily saying these things shouldn't exist. Right. It's just about who is for at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And there are a lot of us who still don't know. Right. A lot of us who are still going to be enlightened by seeing these new projects that come out. But I think there's even a way to talk about some of this stuff without having to focus so much, hone in on dr the dramatization of m mutilating black people. Like, we don't Absolutely. Need, we and can't. a lot of the films, the problem, a lot of the problem is, I think, you know, we, we were talking about, or I don't know if we were talking about this on camera or off camera, mm -hmm. but, you know, how disrespectful historically mm -hmm. America has been to our bodies mm -hmm. pre <laughs> and post-mortem, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and when we, when, whenever something happens on screen, um, they will consider twice or three or four, five times what they would depict happening to a white woman mm. and don't consider more than once what they would consider. And they're like, this black woman, she's an actress. And then the actress is too afraid a lot of the time mm -hmm. because we don't have a whole lot of opportunities to speak up and be like, yo, this ain't right or they do and are not hurt, right? And so we see a lot of the product of that on screen, of not handling it sensitively enough because you're not from our community and you don't understand the intention. Yeah. And so, you know, I think, like you said, there are ways to depict, because we do need to our, our history to be told mm -hmm in unapologetic and truthful ways because it hasn't. It's been lied about so much and, and we need more black documentarians. We need more, um, more of our history do documented in, in story and you know uh, documentary, like mm -hmm. fiction and written scripted materials and also documentaries and journalism. Yeah. Um, and Okay. There's so much more. That is a piece of us. Yeah. We also exist in the future. Yes. We also exist right now. We also exist outside of our trauma. For people, for those executives that don't understand our plight and our existence, black is synonymous with trauma. Mm. So when they are seeing our black stories, they're like, where's the trauma in it? This isn't real. Oof. And it's like, no, 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 no. Black is a lot more than trauma. Yeah. Black is our whole existence. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot more colors. Mm -hmm. You know, we do have joy. We have just chill. We've yeah. seen white people do mediocre all the time, just sitting, chilling at home, maybe smoking something, <laughs> decide to clean, get some palm oil or whatever. Maybe, you know, do a little. This is a story about the first white woman who gargled with coconut oil okay. i don't know you know and they'd be like oh okay this is cool this is a fun story interesting but black mm -hmm. people got to be the first to go to the moon mm. <laughs> to yeah. earn the right for their story to be told yeah. right yeah. so a lot of that is just seeing us as worthy of mm. chilling yeah as worthy of just being now that's know? that's real that's exciting and i'm like you brought up a lot of points and so i wonder what has it been like for you as someone, because it's one thing for your friends to be playing these roles, maybe in the scenario of slavery, that's a sensitive thing. It's one thing for the actors to be in rooms and not be comfortable with how they're being represented um, and being a little afraid to say something because this is their shot, their opportunity. But what's it like for someone like you, who this is also the things that you're passionate about, being in rooms and speaking up like, have you gotten pushback? 
what are ways you've learned to communicate and advocate for yourself in rooms? Like, what does that look like for you? Um, I always thought I was great at learning until I became an adult. Okay. Um, and so I won't say that I learn how to do it better necessarily. I have a problem where I'm like, okay, this is bull word vomit. Okay. So I, I, I do my best to have, I'm working on my patience with mm -hmm. it, but I know I've missed out on opportunities because mm. of the things that I've said or, and, and I usually go into the room deciding that. Mm. I go into the room saying, if it's not going to be what this is, then I'm not going to waste real. my health and energy. Because, and I, I started to say uh, one of my little mantras that I say to myself mm -hmm. is <laughs> not, not one of my more positive ones, but I'm like, I don't give a fuck about making nobody mad that don't give a fuck about making me mad. Oh, no. Especially corporations. That's, that's corporations fantastic. come in and Love they're like, I don't care if mm -hmm. they're, they're like, I don't care if you can't pay your bills. I don't care if mm -hmm. your mom this and that. This is the budget we have and this is what we have to deal with. And I'm going to be like, OK. I need these resources and mm -hmm. I can't compromise on that. And I'm not gonna sit around and be guilty because I said that and feel guilty That's because true. I said that. So I'm gonna advocate for what I need and the people that I think need and then I'm gonna worry about the consequences. I do my best to hide the medicine and the food sometimes, mm -hmm. but at a certain point I can only do so much. I'm, I give you this first layer and then <laughs> rip the band-aid off. Yeah, you know what no, I'm saying? that's real, that's but, real. But um, it is, I think more than anything, um, the solution is the same that we ha need in our communities, right? Mm -hmm. Organizing and supporting each other and making sure that we're organizing and building community, community laterally because we're always taught to reach up and see, oh, no, we need this person that's successful to advocate for us, but we actually need to just advocate for each other, mm -hmm. each other's budgets, each other's pay, each other's um, hair and makeup, you know, the more people we have advocating for us, even as we're building our team, looking at the assistants that are coming up, not just the agent that's a partner or, you know, this person that has more resources, we all have to come up together and have to be on the same page of what we're doing and the reason yeah. we're here, the intention of liberation. Um, and if we have that, I have it with my lawyer, mm -hmm. at long, late night conversations with my lawyer, both of them, my publicists, mm -hmm. all my black pub. I got three black women publicists. You know what I'm okay saying? You. And you already know some of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I know I, I've got. You know, I, I can't. I can't count. I probably. I I can count because it's very few. Mm -hmm. Probably have over, including people's assistants and stuff. Probably have over 30, so 50, 40 people on my team, and maybe two white people, mm. three. And I make sure that I have checks and balances. They know my values. I've listed them for them. These are my top values. Um, wellness, inclusion, liberation, power, and what did I say? Creativity, okay. right? These are the, my values that I judge everything by and I tell them my whole process. So they're very familiar with how I make decisions mm -hmm. and how I build. And they, 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 it's it's imperative that they advocate for that, advocate for that if they're going to be on my team. I love that, and I'm taking mental notes, especially because I most recently had a situation to where I was. <laughs> the phrase I'm using this year is "hold." Like people should be trying to hold me left and right, <laughs> um, and I was hold too late in the game. In this in this situation in particular, and it just made me feel so bad. It made me feel guilty because I honor my values and you would think that when people come to the table and ask me to participate, they understand my values as well. But it's not the case, especially if people aren't communicating them at every stop. Um, but yeah, like experience censorship like head on and just did not even know how to handle it because everything's happening so fast. Like, oh, legal said this and we actually need you to change that. We need to change that. We need you to post it today at this time not even give me an opportunity to really feel it. And I said to my entire team, we'll never be in a situation again because mm -hmm. we know the questions to ask ahead of time. Yeah. We know the questions to ask ahead of time as far as, do you know what you're asking for when you ask for Lene? And is there a clause in this contract that says that I can't speak up right. about some bullshit if you give me some bullshit? Right. So um, definitely we'll be keeping those things into account as I move forward. 
the rain is trying to rain on our parade, <laughs> obviously. And so I'm going to let production pack things up. Thank you so much for your time. It's been amazing to have you here. I'm so inspired by the work that you do. Actually, I lied because I want, before we go, for you to talk about the work that you're actually doing to do like activi- activism within the community yeah. of people writing, producing, and how they're using their platforms. But absolutely yeah we launched build power um 2018 build power is um well now it's a production company and an impact group like we we okay. have an impact side um and we've done a lot of work in the community as you were talking about earlier in 2020 um amplified a lot of the local organizations here and efforts um with the black lives matter at los angeles and um you know, George Floyd protests and everything that was happening during COVID. Um, And now we're moving into our next phase. We produced a lot of short form content, amplifying Mm -hmm. our partners. Now we're like, we launched, had a big launch last year and everybody's still writing to us about this launch. And I'm just excited about the projects we're developing for long form content, Mm -hmm. TV, film, podcasts, um, to shift the culture. And it's always gonna be from a lens of liberation it's always going to be gr- uh, grounded in radical black, um, radical black liberation in the movement, and we're excited about where we're going with that. Yeah, we we're going to still still do our our work in the community, but um, our mandate is to reimagine and realize uh, the liberated future that we know we deserve, and we do that in every aspect, making sure that we leave our communities better than we found them. A lot of our inspiration came from how Issa ran insecure. Mm-hmm and made sure that she loved on her people and her community. Um, and we want to take that and scale it up and, and, and learn from, you know, all of those beautiful things that she implemented and, and do it, you know, more. Oh, I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. Just call me if you need me. Yeah, you know, I already, I'm already talking to you. <laughs> right, you know what I'm right. saying? Well, um, that's enough for y'all. Thank you so much for coming back. <laughs> um, we'll be back next week with it, with just as an exciting guest as this one i'm not trying to give y'all hints about nothing that's happening here but i'm really excited if you can't tell um this is an amazing conversation thank you once again for your time and i hope to be either in a lot or on a lot hello hey playing on words hey i like that (laughs) i like that i like it and that's a wrap